Jeremy Stein, one of the latest Fed officials today, trying to taper tapering fears. I think the decision that was made uh, at the most recent meeting was really first, foremost, and almost entirely a decision about clarity. Okay, as I said, I don't think it was an effort to, to change the stance of monetary policy. I think we were coming to understand as we move forward in time, it was just not acceptable to leave you know, unanswered or to put no color around what substantial improvement means. New O Capital President James Frischling and Fulcrum Securities Chief Investment Strategist Rob Morgan both, jo both joining us live right now. And Rob, you know, we've literally had a parade of Fed officials over the past few days trying to calm the markets, but with red arrows again this morning. Is this damage control even working, Rob? I tell you, Cheryl, I, they, they, they wanted to be more transparent, and I, and I think they're just confusing the issue here. But, but it does seem that the, the message I'm hearing now is this: it's going to continue to be data-dependent, uh, even though they have thrown in the calendar-dependent uh, argument in there. But it seems data-dependent, uh, and that's, that seems to be reassuring the markets. Reassuring the markets? But wait a minute, Jim. I mean, I think there's a bigger story here. And it seems like that the, that the fact that you've got some, what, nine we're up to now, nine Fed officials coming out after Ben Bernanke. I mean, I mean, either he told them to go out and launch a PR campaign to get the markets back in shape, or they're going out on their own accord because they disagree with the boss. What do you say? Um, I actually believe this is a fairly concerted effort to signal to the market as much as possible to wave flags that, that the accommodating policies will come to an end. However, it will be data dependent. So whether it's Bernanke saying it's coming soon, whether it's someone saying it's coming later, the fact then is it's data dependent. Jim, why are they bother? Jim, why do they bother coming on talk? I think they want the Look market to understand home. it is going to happen. And I, I believe it's a concerted effort. They keep saying, don't listen to what we're saying. We're not trying to signal to the market, but they keep talking about it. I actually think the signal is as follows. Get used to it. It's not going to be the accommodating uh, bond buying program in perpetuity. It will come to an end, but I believe it's going to come to an end when the data itself, when the labor market data and the inflation data suggest it's okay to do so and it's going to take some time. Okay, Rob, then what I find interesting about uh, you're always changing your what you're overweight, you're underweight, you're overweighting small caps right now versus large cap and you're overweighting international. That tells me that you're not so ready for all this data, that you think that maybe the Fed, even though they're going to stay in place, that, that you know, U.S. market, especially large cap, isn't the place to be. Well, Cheryl, I, I made that change really at the beginning of the year because I had been on the on the big cap uh, growth uh, train. I think uh, quite a bit of this is related to the fact that I think the dollar is going to continue to nudge up here, which takes some wind out of the sails of big cap stocks and helps small cap stocks. So that's that was really the major reason uh, for for that for that change. And also, as bear market or excuse me, bull markets uh, evolve, and we're we're in year five of this one now, uh, the the bull will spread towards more of the small cap, the international area. The, 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 the riskier areas, and I so so even though the Fed is saying, hey, tapering's coming to an end, and rates eventually will go up. I mean, I think the bull market continues. All right, but you know what, Jim? One thing that we have seen, and this has caused volatility and a lot of concern, is when we've seen out of China economic data out of China worries about the banking system there. They've kind of come out and, and you know put some water on it, but still, uh, we don't really know what the next quarter is going to be for China's growth. No, and I think industrial profits uh, were, were better than expected at 15 percent uh, from a year over year, and I think it put some concern to rest that the world's second largest economy is by no means going to fall off a cliff. Uh, in Japan, the... Uh, they just uh, like to keep Americans held hostage in jails, but that's another story. Yeah. That, that, that's, a whole, that's a whole different story. <laughs> but we do like the announcement. Consumer sentiment is, is very strong, six-year high, and we are liking what the consumer is feeling, the wealth effect. Their home is more valued, uh, their portfolio is, is, is valued, and we think that's going to trickle down and people are going to start spending some money. All right, so you're going international. You're both saying international. You're both agreeing on a lot of things, especially about Ben Bernanke. We're going to see, though, how how much you two agree we're gonna leave it here for now you're both coming back in a little bit you've got armed with your stock picks your latest stock picks for the first round of our new series the Fox Business Summertown Showdown we are ready to roll with both of you we will see you in just a little bit guys thank you, thank you. you heard the man get ready for the showdown Every Friday, we're picking, we're pitting two stock pickers against each other with two plays each. We're going to track them for a month, bring them back to see whose picks perform best. Our challengers today, Jim Frischling, New Oak Capital, taking on Rob Morgan from Fulcrum Securities. And your reputations aren't the only thing on the line this week, gentlemen. We have got food involved now, too, Rob. Two cheesesteaks up against Jim's counter offer, a New York pizza. Let's get this show on the road. All right, Rob. First, up to you. Let's go with your first stock pick, and it is Microsoft. 
Yeah, I've been, a, I've been a basher of Microsoft for quite some time, Cheryl, because the, uh, the PC is dying. But I think they get that now. I think they're changing their strategy. They just released Microsoft, or excuse me, Windows 8.1 this week. That's going to give them momentum in the mobile market. They also just uh, struck a deal with Oracle that's going to give them some momentum in the cloud market. And I think, that, I think they, they get it now, and, and I'm very excited about uh, Microsoft over the next month. All right, you're excited about Microsoft. You're picking it for a month. All right, we're going to go from technology to travel. Jim, you're picking orbits. Yeah, for the summertime showdown, I want to pick something that's cool. So what's cooler than going to orbits.com and booking yourself a summer getaway? Uh, we like the tailwinds uh, in the online travel space. The outlook for the uh, travel industry is up. Consumer confidence is up. It's going to help feed that. We like the, uh, the move from the traditional bookings to online bookings. Right now, the U.S. market, 50% of all transactions are done uh, online. We think uh, Europe and Asia lag, so there's growth. Uh, we think they've got a great brand. Uh, they are the fourth biggest player. Uh, to do well in this space, you need size and scale. Uh, uh, we think they have great consumer loyalty. They're going to benefit greatly from their shift away from, let's say, just U.S. online air booking into e-booking hotels into Europe, into Asia. So we like their growth story uh, as, as they move away and diversify their revenue streams into hotels specifically. Travelocity, step aside on that one. Okay, well, let's move on to the next pick, Rob, from you. Uh, let's talk about Dover. Tell me about Dover, Rob. Yeah, well, most Americans would know Dover as the elevator company, but it is a terrific uh, global infrastructure play. They've had great internal uh, growth, but also they've been a, a great acquirer through the years. They've had 200 acquisitions since 1955, and uh, and essentially, uh, from a from a dividend standpoint, they've raised their dividend for 57 consecutive years. Only 20 big cap stocks can say that. You can fake earnings, but you can't fake dividends. So, uh, so I like Dover here. All right, and the chart's going to tell us the story over the next uh, month. That is for sure. All right, Jim, next. To you, Barry Plastics. You're going a little small cap on me today. What's this? Went a little small, went a little small cap, and this is the pick that's going to earn me my two Philly cheesesteaks. Uh, because while <laughs> oh, this company okay. uh, has some debt issues, um, they are deleveraging. They've brought down the debt. Uh, they've traditionally been a private company. They went public in 2012. Uh, we think they also took advantage of the low interest rate environment to refinance over a billion dollars of debt and extend the maturities. So they're getting their house in order on their balance sheet. But what we really like about it is this is a very innovative company. And while plastic cups may not sound all that exciting, they are going to be coming out with new products that keep our drinks cooler in the summer and okay. warmer in the winter. And with clients like McDonald's and Procter and & Gamble and Hershey, we think it's what they're doing on the innovation side that's going to carry these guys forward. I got 10 seconds for trash talk. Real quick, Jim, he's picking Microsoft. What do you say? Oh, on Microsoft. I mean, I don't want my, my office is using it right now, but you went, so you went, you went small there, Rob. You went with a small company that very few people have heard of. I respect that greatly. Rob, you got 10 seconds on orbits. Give it to me. Hey, Jim, I, well, Jim, I'm, I'm going to look forward to drinking out of Berry Plastics cups when you're buying me that New York pizza, Jim. I, I, will, I, will, I will look forward to that. There is food on the table and probably some beverages as well. All right, again, everyone, Rob is picking Microsoft and Dover. Uh, Jim is backing Orbitz. And Barry, to all of you at home right now, tweet me with who you think is going to come out on top. I want to thank you both for joining us in this week's showdown. We're going to see you in a month. We're going to be crowning the winner. Someone's going to be eating either cheesesteaks or pizza. We're going to figure that out at that point. <laughs> <laughs> Let's check in Thanks, Cheryl. on the competitors. Thanks, guys. Let's check in on the competitors from week one.